Hello everyone, welcome to Jamaica 411. I'd like to welcome everyone who's joining me for the first time. Welcome and for my regular subscribers and viewers, welcome back. So today I'm bringing you some news that you may have heard about. Some amount of misinformation may have been filtered into the public. And uh, I cannot blame people for wanting to know what is happening. And so with the government failing to give us information on a timely basis, it is no wonder that sometimes we may get it wrong. I am going to be letting you hear a news clip from TBJ News. It's a midday news today, which is May 6, 2024. And the video clip and this video is about the aircraft the German aircraft that landed in Jamaica. You would have heard it was Friday. Well, I have some news because finally the government, the Ministry of National Security, put out some information on the incident. And I hope we'll get some clarity and it would also help us to understand what happened as well as provide us with some information because you know, it's very important as people that the information that we receive and put in our heads um, is the truth, or at least as close to it as possible. So I'm going to let you listen to TVJ Midday News today and let them tell us what their investigations turn up. Then I'm going to read for you the press release from the Ministry of National Security and uh, I think we're going to have to or should accept the government's version of it. They are, after all, our national security apparatus. And we're going to see if we can make head or tail of what it is they said happened. All right, so let's listen to TVJ News now. We begin this afternoon with news of the suspected smuggling operation TVJ has been following exclusively. The situation has again led to concerns about Jamaica's security border. This after authorities detected the operation involving 218 Indian nationals who arrive in the country on Friday. Shadow Foreign Affairs Minister Dr. Angela Brown Burke is demanding answers from the government. The one border over which we have control comes as poor as others, then we would be in serious trouble. You know, we want to know the origin, destination, and apparent purpose of the flight. You know, the identity of the individuals or organizations responsible for chartering the flight. Why the flight was allowed to land in Jamaica without proper clearance. Why standard immigration and customs procedures were not followed. Where are the children? what is to be done about their continued presence in Jamaica and what measures are being taken by the JCF to ensure the safety and security of the Jamaican public. The German embassy is now involved in the matter as the aircraft's crew is German. TVJ News understands that they're upset because they didn't plan to stay in Jamaica for an extended period. They have extended to fly the charter with the passengers to Jamaica and then depart. The crew then contacted the embassy in Kingston, which intervened. TVJ News also understands that a multi-agency operation is now underway to try to take the 218 passengers back out of the country but a highly placed source says it appears they may not leave until tuesday due to a series of quote nightmare issues end quote we will continue to track this story and have more in subsequent newscasts Meanwhile, Dr. Brown Burke is also taking issue with how the matter has been handled when compared with the forced repatriation of Haitians asylum seekers. Many of us remember what happened in COVID-19, where Jamaicans were held at sea and prevented from coming into Jamaica. We have seen recently with the Haitians who were hastily returned to a war-torn Haiti, but here we have 218 persons 
calling in to Jamaica without the proper protocols being followed. We see a difference in treatment of the three different cases. Secondly, last year, I think it was the France had a similar situation um, with, some, um, with a flight, just as in this one, and those individuals remained on the tarmac for four days. We want to know why it is in this case Jamaica did not follow those protocols. So there you have it. That was a report from TVJ Midday News Today, May 6, 2024, about that flight, that German flight that came into Jamaica on Thursday with 200, over 200 Indians aboard. Now, you heard the opposition spokesperson on foreign affairs, Angela Brownberg, raising some questions. And uh, we... We'll need to examine now whether those questions were valid questions, reasonably asked questions, as well as what it is that they may be implying. Then we are going to read what the Ministry of National Security said happened, and we'll see whether or not the questions that was asked by Angela Bromberg were answered in the Ministry of National Security's news release. So let us have a look now at what that news release said. That's a news release from the Ministry of National Security. So this Ministry of National Security news release published in the Jamaica Observer reads, Flight with over 200 Indians to depart today. So uh, the TBJ News assumed or thought or got information that they were trying to have them removed from Jamaica at least Tuesday but they were able to make the arrangements I suppose they would have made the arrangements with the German embassy because you would have heard that the crew would have complained to their embassy and the embassy intervened and would have made all the arrangements with the Jamaican government to allow the flight to leave all right, so let's see what it is that the ministry said now. So the report is made in Kingston, Jamaica. It says, The 253 foreigners who arrived in Jamaica on Thursday but were refused entry by immigration officials based on security concerns are scheduled to depart the island in short order. So that's today. According to a news release from the Ministry of National Security on Monday, Arrangements are in place to supervise the departure of the German registered aircraft USC GmbH. Ministry noted that despite arriving on the island legally, did you hear that? So the aircraft, the German registered aircraft, actually arrived in Jamaica legally. So all that information you heard before, that the aircraft was not legal, it did not have a flight plan for Jamaica. That is not true according to the Ministry of National Security's news release. The aircraft landed in Jamaica legally. It arrived on the island legally, all right? And having received the requisite approvals for operation from the Jamaica Civil Aviation Authority, you heard that? So... They had the permission of the Jamaica Civil Aviation Authority, right, to land and to operate in Jamaica. That's what the ministry said. That's the ministry confirming the information now. And so the information I heard before was not true. The Ministry of National Security went on to say, the passengers who are reportedly Indians were refused entry by immigration officials based on security concerns uncovered during their processing at the airport. So it is when they came off the flight to be processed. So they, they, they took the flight from wherever they're coming from and they landed in Jamaica legally. They are now going through the immigration process in order to be um, given entry into Jamaica, right? And it, they are saying that it was a security concern that was uncovered when they were processing them. You remember also that this is a chartered flight. 
So all the persons on this particular flight, it's not like a random thing, you know, with an airline. It's a chartered flight. So somebody chartered the flight to bring these Indians here. And we're going to hear shortly what it is that the ministry is saying was um, the security concerns that the immigration officials had. The news release went on to say, it was uncovered that upon landing in Jamaica, two passengers were on the flight that did not appear on the submitted passenger manifest. You heard that. It was not the plane that was entering our airspace and asking for permission to land without the, the um, Jamaica knowing anything about it. That was not what happened. When the manifest was presented for the passengers that were on board, the immigration discovered that two of the passengers were on the plane that were not on the manifest. So naturally, they have to investigate to find out who these people are. So the report went on to say, this reportedly prompted further investigations by the Passport Immigration and Citizenship Agency, PICA, in collaboration with the Jamaica Constabulary Force. Of course, I'm have to investigate. Who are these people? And how the Dickens they got on the flight and the name did not appear on the manifest. So they wanted to find out. Anyway, the observer reported from the Ministry of National Security said, Pika reportedly later shared that based on enhanced checks, the decision was taken not to grant the passengers leave to land in Jamaica. However, according to the news release, given the duration of the flight, as well as civil aviation regulations for the minimum rest period before clearance is given to safely operate, it was deemed impractical to detain the passengers in the airplane or at the airport. So this is what the ministry is saying why they took the decision not to have these passengers stay on board the flight. Now, why would they want the passengers to stay on board the flight if the flight was legally landed in Jamaica? That was because the passengers were all refused entry because of those two who were not supposed to have been on, it, on the flight in the first place. For further clarity, it says here, given the duration of the flight, so the flight was coming from Dubai. I think it came beyond Dubai, landed in Cairo, and then came to Jamaica. So it, it's coming, they came over the Atlantic Ocean. So it's a very, very long flight. And when they talk about the rest period, that is not for the passengers. The rest period is for the crew. The crew, after flying for so many hours, the Regu aviation regulations require them to rest for a certain number of hours and before they can operate again, meaning that before they can fly out. So they were saying, all right, so these, this crew came. Obviously, they could not leave the island immediately, so they had to be put up somewhere. So the airline must have made an arrangement for them to stay overnight in Jamaica for a few hours, maybe a number of days because of the, the flight. And it depends also on where the aircraft is going after it leaves Jamaica. So that is what that was talking about. The ministry's news release went on to say, the release noted that as a result and due to previous reservations made at a hotel in Kingston, the travelers and airline crew members were allowed to leave the airport on humanitarian grounds. They were reportedly escorted to the hotel by law enforce, enforcement and immigration personnel. So this seems to be suggesting, it says here, due to the previous reservations made at a hotel in Kingston, the travelers and airline crew members. So it would appear as though reservations were made for the travelers as well, not just the crew members. And if that is the case, then it appears as though Either the passenger's final destination was Jamaica or the final destination was elsewhere, but they were overnighting or layover in Jamaica to continue on the journey. It's a very long journey after all. 
We don't know where they were going. And that is something that the ministry ought to tell us. Where were they going in the first place? But we, we'll read on and see what else we can discover. So that was the situation. So they decided, all right, let's not let them stay on the plane because this thing might take a, a while, might take a few days. Well, of course, why they didn't just allow them to stay in the in the lounge? I mean, when we had the COVID, we separated the passengers um, that were coming in. We separated them. We had an era where they were tested and so on. Why did they not allow them to, to be separated in the lounge area from the regular passengers and have them under guard by both for the police and the military? That is perhaps something that the ministry and the minister um, should, should answer. That's a question for them. But at any rate, they allow them to leave. Now, you recall that in the news report that the crew members were complaining to their embassy, the, the German embassy. Is it possible that it was a German embassy that... Um, negotiated with the government to have these passengers and their crew staying at the hotel while they do their investigations because we don't know any timeline there's no timeline given in any of this but we'll read on and see if there is uh we, we find any more clues so the release goes on to say the passengers remain accounted for and are currently at the norman Mal international airport as they await their departure the release said the charter company will reportedly stand the cost of their accommodation and return. The Ministry of National Security stated that local authorities routinely screen passenger flights for security threats and possible breaches of law and or regulations. They are quoting from the ministry now. In this instance, while the ministry was alerted to the operation of the flight based on what appeared to be anomalies and missing details from its initial permit application, the necessary supporting documents were later supplied to satisfy the requirements for obtaining a permit to operate to Jamaica. So let us see if we can unravel what it is that the ministry is saying. Because they are saying that they were alerted to the operation of the flight based on what appeared to be anomalies and missing details from its initial permit application. So the ministry is saying that the flight did not turn up in Jamaica without, I mean, mysteriously. They did apply for permit. They did apply for permit. And, uh, but there was some missing information on the, on the permit that they had applied for. So the, the flight had to be held on to and they had to uh, investigate. And now I imagine they would have contacted the source country where the application was made from. And whatever information that they needed to complete the application was done. And so the flight the flight would have now become legal. So basically speaking, the permit, the permit was not complete. This seems to be what this is saying. And it was brought to the attention of the ministry. And it says here that the supporting documents were later supplied. So there was some documentation that was supposed to have accompanied the, the application for permission to land in Jamaica and that was not supplied at the time it held up the flight and it was eventually supplied and so they satisfied the requirement for obtaining the permit so the permit was actually obtained after the flight arrived on the island so they applied in the country of origin some supporting documents were so accompanied the application it's only when the plane landed in Jamaica that they discovered it was missing the ministry was alerted. Permission would have been granted. Um, the, I'm not sure how it would have worked because, I mean, the plane is now here without the documentation. They were able to arrange to have documentation supplied. And uh, therefore, they received the permit to operate in Jamaica. Now, as to why now they held on to these passengers is another story. 
but that evidently was what they did. Now, that ends the news release from the Ministry of National Security. And I'm afraid I have more questions than answers. Now, what was it if they're trying to minimize the situation? It's obvious. So that the people don't panic and think that there's some big security threat or that they did anything wrong at the airport. But a flight came in. It landed. It's a German aircraft with a German crew that was chartered by a chartered company to fly some Indians from somewhere and land in Jamaica on Thursday. That's the story. They landed in Jamaica. When they landed in Jamaica, there were two issues, evidently. One was that the aircraft's manifest passenger list had two passengers on it who was not mentioned in the list. So they found, if they said they're supposed to have 243, they found 245, they figured out who the, the extra two were, and that was one problem. But it seems to me before that problem, the other problem they had was the, the, the flight itself. The flight and the, I'm not sure it's your crew, the, the airline company, I suppose, would have set a flight plan and they would have determined they were coming to Jamaica and they, ha they had applied as they ought to for permission to land in Jamaica. That permission was granted, but when they arrived, it was discovered that the process was incomplete. There was a documentation that was supposed to have accompanied the application that was not there. The, the immigration could not find it. So they had to get that information from the company, I suppose, the charter company or the airline that owned the aircraft. And they got it and they were satisfied. Now, let me ask you something. What is all this business about the the passengers staying on board the flight i mean the ministry is saying they didn't want to them to stay on board the flight for humanitarian reasons what would they have been talking about perhaps the bigger question is why did they refuse landing for all the other uh, passengers who were on the flight and there seemed not to have been any issues. They never said there was any issues with them. So why were they refused entry? Was there some other reason why they were refused entry? I mean, do you refuse entry for an entire plane load of people because two persons were on the plane who were not supposed to be there? Somehow that don't make no sense. So I think we need some more clarity on that from the minister. Why were the entire passengers where were all the passengers refused entry into Jamaica? What was it that made the immigration officers determine that there is a security risk with all these other passengers? We need some clarity on that. As for all of what was said before, everybody, you know, went searching for their own source of information because, you know, government can be very slack. I mean, when it comes to providing timely information, I want to hear what you heard, what stories you heard. Put it in the comment section and let's see if they got as wild as they can sometimes get. <laughs> and um, if you have heard anything else anywhere else to clarify the situation or provide more information that we are asking here, then please put it in the comment section as well so that we can, you know, know. Um, or, or you can put also the source you know, like you watch this on that or you read that, that we'll be very grateful. So thank you so much for listening to us. I hope I brought some clarity to this unusual situation. Please remember to give us a thumbs up if you like the information I brought to you. And share the video as well as subscribe if you have not done so already. So once again, till next time, all good.